Vikings vs. Seahawks. Good Morning Gallahorn presents GMG in the Raw, your favorite Daily Norseman show. You're the, dude, you're the Cypress Hill of this show. You're fucking Ryan Leaf, dude, with a beard. Oh, Cypress, oh my God. Why are you trying to take the quarterback's head off? <laughs> Oh, we need to get up doing that on the air. Oh, yeah, we should have recorded that. That was like well, the Michael Anthony Hall. <laughs> Chicks can't handle the dope. Chicks cannot hold their smoke. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That's great. <laughs> That's just natural funny stuff. That's not... Let the statgasm guy have the statgasm. to the first 2019 in the Raw episode. We're always in the Raw. That's a nice yeah. intro. Now, we just got finished watching the Vikings defeat the Seattle Sea Chickens. Final score, 25-19. <laughs> there were a few things that we liked, a couple that we disliked. And we are willing to share them with you in the raw as how we feel, how we observe them, lubed up and ready to go. Drew, how are you doing tonight? Beautiful, man. Beautiful. <laughs> Ted, what happened to Ted? Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Uh, if I was any better, I'd be against the law. And, and boys, this is my first beer. I, I, I didn't crack a beer. Until after the game, because I gotta, I gotta do some writing, and I gotta work tomorrow, man. Old, old man can't go to work hungover anymore. It just doesn't work well for me anymore. With what? When, when was the last time? Last week? <laughs> Not been probably. Home, oh, oh no, it's been years. It's been years. Really? Good. Good for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Years for me too. I don't. I don't drink during the week. Usually, I'll have like a beer or two, but but if I got an early day the next morning, I'm not. No. No, I, I got to, no. I can't not do even it, that good, I can't do it. Not even that well, good beer it, in Germany? Uh, no, no, uh, especially in Germany. Well, if Paxton Lynch was our quarterback, you'd be drinking right now. I'd be hammered. I would, I would, be, I would be calling people if they had dealers looking for meth. Dude. If Paxton Lynch is our quarterback, terrible. that dude is horrible. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty good game. Saw some good stuff tonight, man. Saw some good stuff. All right, uh, let's yeah. start. Let's start with the first team. The Vikings take their first drive, drive three quarters of the way downfield, and go. <clears throat> yeah, up, um, right. I petered out. I, I think. I think that drive turns out a little bit differently if Cousins hits Madison on that screen because Madison had a whole lot of real estate in front of him. Yeah, if he didn't score, he'd have been inside. If he didn't score, he'd be inside the ten for sure. Um, I wasn't sure. I I, I still, I'm I'm still not sure what I'm going to write about the offensive line. I I thought there were a couple a couple plays where the offensive line. Pass protection was bad. There was like a jailbreak. Uh, the Cousins just had to bail and just throw the ball out of bounds. Um, there was one. They kind of let the pressure come on that screen, and then and Kirk floated the pass. Those are the only really two pass plays where I remember Cousins had a, a lot of pressure. So, overall, it wasn't terrible. 
but those are just my thoughts. What, what are you guys thinking? Uh, it, it, Kirk Cousins is looking pretty good on the on the rollout plays this year. He's looking. He looks like he's taking a deeper. There's more depth on his rollout when he does the play action and he bootlegs around. He's a lot deeper, which in turn gives him more vision when he turns up field. I think that's going to help him complete passes. He seems like he's taking a wider angle. Um, that's something I noticed early on. The things I really love the mobility that he's showing outside the pocket and being able to, you know, make better passes, better decisions outside the pocket, I should say. Adam Thielen yep. is an absolute stud wide receiver. Adam Thielen so. can't be covered. It's he's great. It really is. But now, you know, the first team, I'm with Ted on the offensive line. It's still dicey. It's hard to tell. Right. And Cousins got pressured. When he got pressured, he got flushed. And that's the one thing we didn't want to see. I don't know that he yeah, got that's, flustered. That's I mean, happen, though. But I mean, he he sort of had to bail out, and and that that throw, I just I don't think it was flustered as much it was as much as it was uh, just misjudging how how high he had to throw it compared to where Madison was over the over the guys that were coming in on the rush. I mean, it was a great play setup. He completes that pass; right. it's a huge game, and I think we have a completely different perspective and feeling of the first team offense tonight. Yeah, but that wasn't the only Yeah, one. a drive can come down to one play like that. Should have made that one because that wasn't that difficult. But it was a little bit come on, man. on Madison's head. And obviously, on, it's not that difficult. It was that difficult for Lynch all fucking night long. If um, Teddy would have thrown that pass, he'd have said, well, the pass rush was too much on him. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy would have made that pass. But oh, no, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't have. <laughs> but speaking of which, at the end of that first drive, Medvig punted, and if I remember correctly, it was like for fifty-three yards. Yeah, it was like they Seattle downed it at the five or the six. I think is where they took over. Yeah, it wasn't. You don't bad. catch a you don't catch a punt at the five yard line. What a dope. No, that's <laughs> kind of stupid. Yeah. Now, defensive first team, was there any impressions that you liked? Too many guys wide open again. Yeah. I mean, uh, remember, we talked, about, we talked about this. You know, the, the two things we wanted to see was the first team rushing off. I think we all agreed the first team rushing offense needed to be better. First team rush defense needed to be better. And last week uh, against the Saints, there were receivers wide open. I mean, and those three things were still there this week. Right. Um, I, 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 Trey Wayne's got worked like a $2 hooker. Well, <laughs> I, I wrote down on all of these with those when Wilson hit guys that were open, I've got Wayne's covering, Wayne's covering, Wayne's covering. I got one with Harris defending. But most of them were Wayne's was covering, and they were open. And it was just like, come yeah. on, Trey. And a few of them, they got in between the seam, between the corner and the uh, safety, and just sat there. And it's like, come on, that, that that's defensive scheme. If the defense is sitting in the zone and they're hitting the seam, Zimmer needs to make the adjustment and change the scheme. Well, so, I, I mean, you look, I don't think, did they blitz at all tonight? Couple times early, there was uh, a blitz, I mean, I, but it wasn't not a lot. No, it, and with the first team, I'm not remembering a first team blitz. I remember Cameron Smith blitzing. I remember Kurtz blitzing. Yeah, Maybe I, I, I just Smith blitzed once because he got a tackle for a loss. I, I mean, it's it's kind of disconcerting, but but then again. Just like the offense, the, the defense is doing fairly vanilla schemes too. That those, those right. plays that, that Seattle got big chunks on, they seem like just kind of base zone uh, with just kind of a base pass rush. And the and the and the two of the four starters, Linval Joseph and Shamar Stephan on the D line, again were not in. Um, and the Vikings defensive line without those two guys really had a hard time 
generating a pass rush. So, yeah, it was it was underwhelming. I'm not saying it wasn't, and and it's a cause for concern a little bit. But until it happens during the regular season, I'm not going to get really really freaked out about it. Zimmer's not going to show him anything at all. Right. Um, no. It's like driving, no a car, driving a car. No nothing. Driving a car around in first gear. I mean, how much are you going to show somebody? They're not going to show them all their exotic yeah. stuff. They're not going to give that away now. I'm I'm pretty impressed right off the bat of the work by our host. Not only can he get drunk, he's taking notes. I mean, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> the guy. <laughs> I want to point that out because I didn't take any notes. I don't drink, but look, five he's taking notes. pages of that shit. <laughs> he's got Jeez. he's got ninety he's got ninety four beers in him, and he's taking notes. That's tremendous. That's um, <clears throat> yeah. I just I, I just <clears throat> the defense. It seems like when the second team defense gets in there, I feel I feel maybe it's just a thing from watching it. I feel like there's more energy. I feel like they're pumped up. I feel like the Maybe the crowd's pumped up more. When the second team defense gets out there, they just seem like they're it, there's more fire. The first team just kind of was stands around. I, I don't know. I don't know. Kind I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm playing more. But you come, they come out. They kind of were, yeah. Uh, Odin Igbo comes in there. He's rushing hard. Everybody's Cameron Smith's rushing. Everybody's. It just seems like energy gets jumped up. But it's all vanilla on well, defense at this point. And they're fighting for those spots. So. That makes sense, but I agree with you 100%. The energy went up when that second string defense was in there. And Odenigbo did outstanding tonight. He obviously he he made did, the 53 yes. man roster tonight, period. Oh, I, I think he had a spot on the roster already. But yeah, if he, if he didn't, I, I'd agree. He, yeah, he, he does now. That guy has the, yeah. that guy is a great first step, guys. He has a good, quick jab move. He's going to. I mean, might be onto something there. Might be might be make something out of himself. Now, Cameron Smith, you talk about he had one of the few blitzes and he, he missed it. on that tackle. Absolutely. I felt bad for the guy. Him. Well, well I like Dave Kingman swinging at a curveball he whips so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's an old guy reference. King, Man, that's, remember, that's an old guy reference. Hey. Remember King Kong, Dave Kingman? <laughs> All runners Dude, strike out, no in between, man. That guy, that guy hit a couple of baseballs that they found on Mars when they had the rover up there. That guy, <laughs> that guy could hit some shots. Struck out a lot, but the Kong could hit. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah. that's good knowledge right there, Ted Glover. That's, that's an old guy reference, man. Sorry about that. Got to be more time. Yeah, that's what we're here for. We are old. <laughs> Madison got a lot of work tonight. Obviously, Cook didn't play. What did you think of Madison's running? I'll go first. Uh, you know, I think like, Madison did. Oh, yeah. Go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. I, no, you scared go. me with his leg injury. When he got, I thought he was hurt. I thought we lost him for the I, season. When they, <laughs> I did, too, when he got bent back. But I'm happy with him. He's not going to bust a lot of long runs, but that guy's, that guy's solid, man. He's a solid yep, running back, and I like him. At least one that was like for 20. He got that 22-yarder, yeah. But uh, he seems to run. He runs kind of angry. He's very confident in what he's doing, and uh, he's the number two running back right now. So I'll let Ted elaborate a little more. That's about all I got to say on him. I like him. I, I thought it was very similar to last week. Uh, didn't look particularly great with the first-team offense. I think he had like maybe one decent run for like maybe four or five yards. First carry, I think. Uh, but you know, we, we said this last week. He sort of he seems to get better as the game goes on, and, and I, I thought he showed a, a really nice cutback and vision because uh, that on, on his big game. Because I think that run was originally designed to go to the right, and he just sort of saw there wasn't anything there. The left side of the line completely sealed off the edge, and he was gone, man. It was. I like him. I, I like him a lot. I, I think he's going to be a really valuable asset to this offense. I do too. Now, who won the w or the running back three position? Boom. Boom. It's over Boom. with. Without Look. a doubt. I saw Look, Abdullah Maddie. once. I don't even know why I, I don't even know why Abdullah's going to make this team. I don't know. I, you I know, after the night, he didn't punts or anything. He's he a better he, kick returner than he is. 
I he played once. I saw one play with Abdullah. Oh, did he? Yeah. I thought he wasn't playing. I thought okay. he was a shoe in. Yeah. I thought he was a shoe in, but not so much after this game. Yeah, I, I, I you know, I mean Boone I, I think I think Mike Boone locked down the RB three spot tonight. I, I still think they could very well go with four running backs if if uh the staff isn't really happy with the kick returners that they, they trotted out tonight. But yeah, like Boone's that. gotta be RB three. Uh, I saw they, they, they had they had four got, last year. But that and uh um I didn't think BB did anything special. But Bedette and even Johnson, I think, did okay. And there was one from Dylan Mitchell that was, I think, crap. But anyways. But You're taking so bad. I'm just dribbling on my shirt. I could see three running backs, Cook, Madison, and Boone, and then possibly keeping Ham and Blazing Game. No, you're not going to keep two fullbacks. That'd be dumb. No, no, no. I think Boone's got the number three locked down because he's kind of a change of pace guy. He's kind of like a little, you know, we get, you know what we get with Cook and Madison. They're kind of equal in their running style, but Boone's kind of a little bit of Jarek McKinnon. Has a little bit of shake to him. And I like that. Bit, I think yeah. that we need that. We need a change of pace guy on third downs just to throw something different at the defense. I like Boone. I think Boone, Boone runs, he's a very, he seems to always hit the right blocking angles in the whole right and he knows when to juke. He just seems like he's really comfortable out there. I like I like Boone. I think he's a good player. Yeah. And I think he just gets more and more confident every week too. I mean he, he took a large right. chunk of carries tonight too. I mean I the Yes he um, did. Yeah I, I uh because I think after after that first couple series, like midway through the second quarter, I think Boone other than other than Blossom Games uh, goal line touchdown. I think he had all the other carries for the running backs, didn't he? He yeah. had the majority of them. Yeah. yeah. Did you know? I, I think uh, so, yeah. We don't do a lot of we don't do a lot of stats in this show because we're not really stat guys. But did you know last year Mike Boone was fourth in the NFL of preseason rushing with 195 yards? Mr. Oh, August. Pretty cool. I mean, you know. Speaking of Mr. August. Mr. August. Let's move on to QB3, Kyle Schloeder. Did he have a great game or what? He's his number two. He's already locked it up. It's over. Gotta be, his quarterback rating had to have been through the roof. I mean, he, threw, he threw to Treadwell. Treadwell didn't drop any of them, except for the one that Treadwell got uh, the pass <laughs> interference on. And he you was not, taken not down. To drop any of them. And it's just like, <laughs> Well, he's not supposed to, but the fact that he didn't, they were on target. Floater was hitting everybody he was throwing to where he was throwing to. And it wasn't this, you know, hey, I got third and eight, so I'm going to throw a five-yard pass. He was throwing 15 yards down and hitting receivers. And it was just, if he doesn't get to play QB2 next week, something is wrong. Something, he's got. Zimmer's got something against him because by pure play in the game, he has earned to at least come out and play QB2 next week. He's already got the second spot. As far as I'm concerned, he locked it up today. He's the backup. Yeah, uh, but Emmanuel's still the guy. It's, it's, he's got to come in against the twos and show against the twos. And whether Slaughter played with the twos. Zimmer gives him that chance. I didn't he see that. I saw Mannion come in. Uh, no, no, when, when, some when, of the twos on there, but he didn't. He didn't relieve Cousins. He needs to relieve Cousins. Any order. When when, when Slaughter came into play, it was the it was the entire second string line, and the second string receiver Slaughter played with the twos. For and I I'm not sure if it was two drives, but it was at least one drive. Now, and, and what it, is doesn't, that it doesn't sound matter. Man? It doesn't matter because Mannion is your QB two. What does that sound really? like? I mean, I, I, I hear. I, I don't. I don't hear. Any, I don't hear someone talking about that. But I don't think Mannion did anything to. I mean, the pick six. That pick six was bad. 
But um, <laughs> the, the no, pick six like was water bad. running or air running. <laughs> the the pick six was bad, but I don't think that throw was all. I don't think that was all Manny's fault. I think I think he saw well, changing yeah, coverage. BB's, and and BB I mean, didn't stopped recognize running. BB didn't stopped hear running. the call. BB yeah. pulled up BB to you know, set up like on a, a hook pattern where you know he gets a spot and Manny threw it in front of that like he was going to keep running. And if he kept running, it would have been on target. So one of the two missed, messed that up. We don't know who yet. And, and I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, after that, pick six, uh, Mannion did a heck of a job shaking that off and taking the Vikings offense down the field on a two-minute drive and scoring a touchdown. Where We didn't see what – last year when they had a, a bad play like that go against them, they just they just folded up shop, man. Said, oh, it's over with. Get them next week. I, I, mean, I, just, I, I know it's August. He's got the backup I know it's spot August, you think, right now? Yeah, I do. I don't think he did anything to lose it. Really? I mean, I'm, I, I don't I'm kinda, think he did anything to lose it. I'm kind of devil's advocate. I think kind of playing devil's advocate. More comfortable yeah. play. I, I still I think Motor deserves the chance to follow Cousins next week. Slower out. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not saying this to pan Slaughter's game. He had a really good game. I think. I think his QB rating was like 125 or whatever. And he and he played well. He had he had one really good athletic play. It was it was one of those design rollouts that just sort of looked like it was going to be a disaster. He kind of he kind of bobbled the snap. Uh, and then I think the end crashed down and was kind of right on him right when he got control of the ball, and he avoided that guy. And he managed to, to scramble and get like four or five yards when it looked like it would be a, a a bad busted play. I mean, it was still a busted play, but it turned into positive yards. And that was – I mean, you could talk about his throwing and all that. That was kind of a heady heads-up play that I don't think Mannion athletically could do. I don't think Cousins athletically could do. Uh, at least in terms of running the ball and avoiding the guy and taking nothing and turning it into something. Well, speaking of that doesn't mean I'm advocating for Kyle Sloter as the quarterback, but <laughs> he had a heck of a good game. Kirk speaking Cousins of is the guy. Snap on that first drive, Kirk Cousins, after he blew that screen pass to Madison, the next play he fumbled the snap. He That's recovered the ball. Yeah, it happened. Uh, Bradbury butt sweat, man. That's what happened there. Well, it may have been Bradbury butt sweat, but boy, <laughs> lights went off in my head going, oh, shit, no, not this. On one fumble? What? On one fumble. That's that's how sensitive I am to Kirk Cousins. At least, hey, hey it, at least he got the ball back. If Epps would have been back there, he wouldn't have got it. Christ's sake. <laughs> See that guy trying to recover a fumble? What was Speaking up with away, that? I expected him to come in and easily make the team, and now I'm wondering. But I thought Brothers I thought Brothers was going to go Walker Lee Ashley, Monday Night Football against the Bears, all the way back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did, too. I, I thought Brothers I too. was going to pick that off and score, and it was going to be a Walker Lee Ashley moment. From the from the eighties, and I was going to relive it all, but it didn't happen. Walker <laughs> Lee Ashley, Penn State, baby. <laughs> now, <laughs> damn, we are over. A, a pass, Wilson to Lockett, where Hitman came in over the top. Oh, that was and batted yeah. the ball Jeez. down out of nowhere, and that was just, oh yes. That's the hit man we love. And then we saw him yeah. in a safety blitz for a tackle for loss um, yep. behind the line. And it's yep. just, yes, you know, Harry, you're back. That's what we wanted. That's, about, those were one of the guys we want to see a bounce back. How about J. Ron Curse, who had himself a game? Dude, he had Kirsch a great was game, off didn't he? the chain tonight. Dude, yeah. he looked like, he looked like yeah. Julie Browner out there. He kind of did. did, yeah. That that that's a good 
a good analogy. He sure as shit. He was did. flying around and shit, bashing good people. It was great. And now on the other end of the spectrum, can we talk about Holton Hill? <laughs> is, is Holton Hill? Hill? Is Holton Hill yeah. trying to get cut? I, I mean, seriously, man. You you are you're already in the bag for eight games. You're already in the bag for eight yeah. games. <laughs> and so you think it's a good idea to leave with your head and knock Paxton Lynch out? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I that's hope he saves the money because that's going to cost him. Yeah. That, that's going to be a big fine. And I, he got kicked out. Probably, and and I would be surprised if he gets another game. Me? <laughs> what are they going to do? Suspend me? <laughs> But I mean, you know, he still made he made was, some good play. He made a really bad pass interference play, but he made one yeah. play on like a square out, like a twenty yard square out where he reached around and batted the ball away. That's not it's, easy. Yeah, that's a heck of a play. That's not. Yeah, easy that's a heck of a play. Either. It's not. I think. But I mean, <laughs> just golly, you're gone I, for half the season already, and you do something stupid like that. Yeah, and he lose the him, other. You know. Half the season, he loses half his paycheck. Well, he probably just that lost is, the yeah. other half of his paycheck. <laughs> He's played for That's free. A bad play. <clears throat> bad play. <laughs> Come on, Play. Come play. on, Holton. Hey, where? Hey, hey, where, where is Chris Boyd? You guys, we got to start seeing some something from that. What is that guy doing? Did he play today? One play for Boyd. Yeah, I saw one play okay. for him. And I thought Dylan Mitchell was, was already cut for the team. No, Tillman Mitchell does nothing. He ran. He does nothing. So I don't know. I marked him so, down once with, on a kick return. Same with Jordan Taylor. Where's he at? Taylor was bad. Did he um, play? He had. Uh, I think it was. Um, it was. I, I think Slaughter threw him a pass. That it, it would have been he? a tough what catch. Is, I, I guess I, uh, I don't know. I, don't know. I can't remember. Okay, eight, eight, I, don't know. I don't remember even seeing and, him out there. He hasn't. He didn't but, do anything week yeah. one either, right? He, he dropped the pass. I mean, it was would have been a tough catch, but but he yeah he should have come down with it. I mean, if you're if you're trying to make the team, and and Zilstra had a fairly decent night, and Laquan Zilstra Fredo had, had a fairly night. decent night. Yeah, uh, you got to make those plays, man, and he didn't. I mean, it, I mean, he, you drop stuff like that, and Brent has would have been a tough catch. And I tweeted out Adam Thielen would have caught that. Adam Thielen totally would have caught it. Um, but you drop stuff like that, you know, when, on, on what few opportunities you get, you're kind of making the coaching staff's decision very easy for them. Yep, sure. You are. I thought that was yeah. the best I've seen Zilstra play as a Viking. Granted, it's still yeah. preseason, but overall, he, he overall, caught every yeah. he caught everything thrown to him. Every those little he out did. patterns and all, he, he caught he caught it all. He looked great out there. So, so yeah. who's your WR for then, Zilstra or or Treadwell? I'd say Zilstra at this point. I mean, okay, I say yeah because I don't think Treadwell. I still don't think Treadwell is going to make the team. Treadwell looks like a we'll tight see. end to me, guys. He kind of does. Man. Now, and Irv well, Smith looks like a wide receiver. If, <laughs> <laughs> and Irv had a good night. He did. Irv had a very Touchdown, good night. Baby. He's doing well his first two weeks. He's getting a lot of action. He's getting a lot of experience. He's coming yeah. along just nice. He's coming along nicely. Yes. Now you talk about Dylan Mitchell. Dylan Mitchell had the best kick return of the night. He went from minus three to the thirty-seven. Which is better than everybody else. <laughs> I, well, when, I still, when you're taking it one or two yards deep and getting tackled at the 15. What if know, you had to pick a sweep? out to the Bidette, 37 is a good yard. Bidette good and Dylan Mitchell. What if you had to choose between one of those guys? Who would you take, Bidette or Dylan Mitchell? Bidette. <sighs> He's faster. I watched Bidette on that sweep, and he was like, oh, my God, he's fast. He's a better kick return, for, so I guess he would get the time. I I, I huh? trade get Marcus Sherrill's back. That's just me though. Okay. Yeah, but Marcus. I, miss, I thought about him during, dude. I thought about him during the game when that guy didn't fair catch that ball. 
Oh, like B.C. Oh, Johnson? B.C. Johnson. He got mine. The fact yeah. that he held on to it. Oh, do you know there's a fair catch rule? I mean. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't say oh, he made week two. Don't, don't say it was great that he held on to it. He should have never put himself in that position. That's <laughs> absolutely correct. But at least he held on to it. They've got to do at least that. <laughs> Dave has that in his notes. Get those yeah. notes out. Man. I have that in my notes. I have my notes. Right yeah, I'll do it. Right here. Fucking notes. Um, <laughs> what? What did you think of Dude, Ben Mix? Opening performance. Punting, place kicking, and he had one field goal. I think uh, no I think Matt Wild. I think Matt Wild better start uh, updating his resume because I think his days are numbered. Matt, Matt Wild had back one to punt towards the end, and it was within the ten. But short, it wasn't too bad. Wild's done. He should call Harbaugh and try to get a job on the staff. He's not. <laughs> Michigan, hey, kicking, Vet- Michigan kicking coach. Vedvik had a field goal. I must have missed that. Yes, he had a field goal. Oh, now, what did an that. extra point? Was it a field goal or extra point? No, it was extra point. It was extra point. Right, okay. Because Bailey, Bailey kicked the field goal, right? Yes, Bailey kicked the field goal. Bailey's been yeah, rock solid I, since we brought this other guy in. <laughs> yeah, he has. Something lit a fire under him. Something lit a fire under him. We'll see how all this plays out. This should be interesting. Are there any other impressions you had from tonight, Drew? Uh, I liked I liked Mike Zimmer uh, bringing contraband, uh, chewing tobacco, loose leaf chewing tobacco onto the field in the form of a sunflower seed bag. Did you see that? That was fantastic. <laughs> yes, and it was my coach. Right there. Red there. Man or my coach. That's the best thing of the night, right there. That's the highlight of the night. Yeah, um, you know, I, I'm I'm not disappointed with the performance. I just, you know, I, I would have liked to have seen some improvement on both con- uh, punt and kick coverage, uh, and I didn't. I would have liked to have seen some improvement on um, the rush offense and the rush defense for the first team, and I kind of didn't. So we'll see what that leads to in week three preseason. I guess for me, I'm still I'm fired up on the number twos, the defensive line, and uh, you know, special teams has a lot of work to do. But wide receivers tonight, I felt I feel a little better than I did after week one. At least I seen some other guys contribute. Zilstra, uh, he he looked really good out there tonight, and I think uh, I'm feeling really good about our running backs. It's almost hard to lose any of them. I mean, the guy that's yeah. the odd man out is probably going to get picked up by another team. We got a really good core of running backs, guys. That's how I look at it. I, I thought so. and, all and the quarterbacks too. played well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, Mikey's got some work to do, but they're not scrubs. <laughs> oh, we do, we do like it when we win for in the raw shows, except for we don't get the rants that we normally do. But we're two and zero, oh, baby. Thing. We're on our way to the Super Bowl. Two and zero. Oh. And if only Zimmer could mirror his preseason wins percentage into the regular season, we'd be awesome. But he's still pretty good in the regular season. Oh, he's still pretty good, but he's awesome in the preseason. Yeah. So hey, so next week we're probably going to see a full first half of starters, right? Yes, more sure. than likely. First yeah, man, I, quarter, I, close I, I'm not. I'm not going to catch that game because I'm going to be. Uh, it's my youngest grandson's birthday, and my daughter wants to go camping. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Have fun with that. That's there, funny. <laughs> and yeah. So the, I, the I won't get home till Sunday. Huh? Oh, the Cardinals? Yes, Cardinals. We play yeah. Arizona in Minnesota next week. We're going to destroy Kyler Murray. He's not going to have a good night. No, hopefully. Sure. Yeah, I want to see some jump on that defense next week. I want to see some little jump in those boys. 
firing off, yeah. rally to the ball, a little jump in the guys, you know. And it would be nice to see Len Ball and Stefan in there. And Brian O'Neill, for that matter. And O'Neill on my, the offensive that, side. Took the words right out of my mouth. Is there something really wrong with him, or are we just being overprotective with him? I think we're being overprotective, you know, but it's mostly elbow related. Oh, that's Everybody says overprotective, but man, I just it's starting it's quiet. starting to smell of John Sullivan's back spasms in 2016. Remember oh. that? Oh, he's got oh. back spasms. He'll be out. He'll be out for a couple of days. Oh, he'll be out for a week. Oh, he's on IR and he's not going to play this year. No, I hope not. It was like Nick Easton that, last dude. year. It's like Nick Easton last year. Oh, he's got a sore neck. Oh, he's got a. Uh, pulled muscle. Oh, he's got a herniated disc. He's going to go on IR and miss the season. Yeah. yeah. We're, the land mean, like the, the we're the land of the nagging injuries and shit. The, the, Vikings, the Vikings diagnosed their injuries in the preseason like, well, he's got a hangnail. Oh, he's got like a, a, a ligament pull. Oh, we had to amputate his hand. He's going to go on IR. I mean, it's like so bad. <laughs> it is so bad. That's how it was well, last year with Alpine. <laughs> Alpine will be back yeah, the, for camp. Yeah. Zimmer will tell you that's mm-hmm. the rules. He doesn't have to talk about injuries no, until week one. he doesn't. No, he doesn't. But it just means some gotta, wild speculation. We're going to have to say goodbye to Yukon Cornelius, guys. He does not look good yeah, out there. That's, he did not look good. That's my boy, too. I like him. But he got beat a couple times like, you know, thunder and lightning, man. It was bad. So did Storm Norton. Storm Norton didn't look very good. Storm Norton. Sounds like a fucking metal guitar player. How, wait, hold on. How about Drew Samia? Did you see him, John, with the Seahawks? Yeah, guys? And, then, and then I John, thought he I was ready to throw punches. Dude, I wanted to fight the whole Seattle team. Yeah. <laughs> when uh, I, I can't remember, I think it was Bidet that got got pulled with that horse collar. He went running over, and I thought he was going to punch the dude that tackled Bidet, and and he was like running up to him, and then he realized. Oh, I'll get like I'll get ejected for a year, and he turned right to he re- turned right to the receiver, like, "Hey, man, you okay?" And then he shot a look at the dude, the tackle him. I'm like, "Hit him, punch him, punch him!" And you know what, Ted? Ted, that was incredible camera work. The camera caught it perfectly. It's like, it was perfect camera work. It only lasted like two seconds, but it was perfectly zoned in on it. He was you know, running I kind of right to that, that Seahawks guy. I thought he was going to spear him, man. It was great. I kind of wish he would play. I kind of wish he was a tackle. I kind of wish we could throw him at right tackle and have – I have a feeling right tackle, the O'Neal thing, might be a problem. So, But, you know, we're pretty loaded in there at guard. But I think Klein played pretty well. We're pretty, doing pretty good at right guard. So, yeah, he looks like he wants I, to get I the fight so. every week. That's great. Fire my- and, the, and I got to say, the Vikings need that kind of nasty attitude on the offensive line. I, I really think they do. Yes, they do. They haven't had that in years, dude. Years. No. They've been getting pushed around and pushed around and pushed around. And it's time that they get fed up and stop that shit. And this is going to be the year they do it. They have to do it. Last guy with a really serious attitude on that offensive line, I think, was probably Anthony Herrera. What about David Dixon? That guy. Dave Dixon did not play with anybody. I love Dave Dixon. One of the more underrated offensive great. linemen in Vikings history. He was great. He was great. We've had some gritty ones in the past. I mean, Ed White, Jesus, dude. Yeah. He didn't get any more grittier than Eddie White. We're Dave. Oh, well. I'm right here. Let's call this one for tonight. Drew, you got anything uh-huh. left to say? I say meow, meow, Viking cow. We're going 3-3-3-0 three, three, three and oh next week. <laughs> Ted? Super Bowl, Ted. Huh, boy. <laughs> Super Bowl. All right, for everybody that watched in the Raw, we thank you. 
Hopefully, I'll turn this around real quick. Hopefully, we will not have audio problems like we did with the last week's show that you didn't get to see because the audio you dye that garbage. beard purple. <laughs> that may be an idea. <laughs> hey. I will, pay, I will pay for the hair color. Do it. I'll pay for the hair color. The yeah, more, every time I see it. Week one, diet for week one. Here we go. Everybody, skull Vikings. See you later. Have a great week. Vikings win. Vikings win. Damn it.